Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the big one, Sim Update number 8, which Azobo promises will fix multiple causes of crash to desktops. We're really hoping that this new update has improved the stability of the simulator and in this video we're going to go and have a look at the release notes, see what they've improved, see what works, see what doesn't work and overall try and get a feeling for what we hope is a much more stable Microsoft Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now it is undeniable that Microsoft Flight Simulator is by far the greatest flight simulator when it comes to visual representation of the entire world. You can go absolutely anywhere. You can fly as you do in the real world or you can just treat it as a game and enjoy it for what it is. But whether you like to fly airliners or whether you like to fly GA aircraft around the earth exploring the different scenery that the world has to offer, one thing has got all sim pilots frustrated together at some point and that is the multiple crash to desktops that this simulator seems to incur. With Sim Update 8 we now move to version 1.23.12.0. And Azobo have promised that this is a bug fix update only, nothing else, just focusing completely on fixing bugs, including many which cause the crash to desktops. Now of course some other features have also been thrown into this update as well and we will investigate and look into those a little bit later on in the video. Of course the first thing you have to do is download the update. Now this has never been straightforward or certainly hasn't been for me but upon launching Microsoft Flight Simulator you'll get told that the game update is available. When you're happy go ahead and click OK. Once you've done this the Microsoft Store window will automatically open and from here you then need to locate your Microsoft Flight Simulator app. To do this, click the library button shown on the bottom left and here you'll see everything that you've had installed through Microsoft Store. Of course this will be different for those of you who have used Steam. Scrolling down I can find Microsoft Flight Simulator and suddenly it tells me that I now need to install this from the Xbox app. Clicking this will open the Xbox app and it's from within here that you download the update. As you can see if I hover my cursor over on the icon for Microsoft Flight Simulator it tells me that there is an update available. So click into this and just press the big blue update button. Once that's all done you can then click play and the app will launch as normal. The simulator should then prompt you to actually download the full new update. Now of course for different versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator your update size may vary. I have the premium deluxe version so you can see my total download size here was shown at 4.34 gigabytes. Once the update has completed and the sim is running, remember you will need to go into your content manager to update your packages. Again, depending on which packages you've got installed will determine the size of the download that's going to be needed again to update these additional items. Next, if you use rolling cache as I do, remember this will need to be deleted as it contains old data from the previous version of the simulator. To do this, of course, just go to your data page and if you don't have time to update your rolling cache right now as it is another additional download, simply turn that off for the moment, press delete, click OK and then make sure once you have done that that you press save. One of the big things with this new update for those of you who fly either the Cessna 152, the Cessna 208 Grand Caravan or the Beechcraft King Air 350, the sim now uses a new advanced propeller simulation system which simulates propeller effects much better and much more realistically giving you much more realistic P factor, feathering, prop drag etc. The marketplace in the sim has also been given a little bit of a makeover. If we select into it now, we can see that the organization of the marketplace has been optimized. One of the things that I really like about this new marketplace is if we go ahead and use the tabs at the top, in particularly the airports tab, this now shows you on a global screen all around the world the particular airports that are available to be upgraded and downloaded through the marketplace. So let's now start to take a look inside the game itself and first of all let's have a look at optimization. Here we are with sim update number 7 still installed and you can see flying over Manhattan which is a great benchmark in some clouds and I've got frame rates of around 26 and 27. Move over to sim update number 8 
and you'll see that it is pretty much exactly the same. There may be one or two uh, frames extra and as you can see, as expected coming out of that cloud layer, that the frame rates do improve. Now I automatically have my frames locked using the Andrivia control panel to 37 FPS. I don't really need any more of that for the kind of flying I do and I'd rather the extra resources be spent on improving the overall smoothness and quality of the graphics. Next, one of the things that I was quite excited about to hear, given the sim stability, was this little update here. Fixed frame rate drops on DirectX 11 when the player has multiple external windows open. Now, unless I have been misreading this, I took this to assume that whenever I bring one of the primary flight displays or navigations into the pop-out phase, we pop out that window, then it would mean that the frame rates would no longer drop. This is Sim Update 7, so this is prior to the update, and let me show you quickly what I mean. If you hit the right Alt key, then your mouse cursor should turn into a magnifying glass. You can click on this, and when you do that, it adds the external window, so you can now see this here. This would be great for when doing tutorials videos and showing you flight routes etc in the live flight but look at the FPS in the top right hand corner that has now dropped to 18 and a half so once we get rid of this window you'll see that that jumps back up to normal flying with 18 and a half FPS is just no good so if we quickly get rid of that you'll see the FPS jump back up to where it was previously and I thought that this would now be fixed with this update However, here we are now in Sim Update 8. Again, you can see FPS is locked at 37. That's working great. So let's try and pop out the primary flight display again. The moment I do that, bring that in screen for you to see, it's made no difference to those frame rates. So let me know down in the comments if you think I'm misreading what this fix and stability from the update is actually meant to give us, because I was really disappointed to find that it has not solved this issue. I was looking forward to being able to use this during live streams and tutorial videos in the future. As it is, it seems we'll just have to wait. Another little quirk I've discovered since Sim Update 8 is sometimes I've really struggled to actually set a departure point. Here you can see me trying to film part of my FPS comparison check that you saw a little bit earlier on in the video. I'm trying to set us off at the One World Trade Center, which is where I would normally do that, but for some reason it wouldn't allow me to. It also occasionally then wouldn't allow me to delete a departure either. So let me know again down in the comments if you have had any sort of issues trying to set a departure point from the world map screen. Something else that has been updated, which I clearly missed in the release notes, is the camera settings page. If we now go ahead and have a look in the camera settings, particularly the showcase camera, you'll now see that drone speed and also the drone rotation speed, as well as the zoom level, has been given a number which makes a lot more sense. Basically, from zero all the way up to 250. Sadly, they've still got sliders, which means it's not always easy to set that perfect number that you're after. A little arrow left and right to perhaps increase this incrementally would be really nice. Finally then, let's have a look at a really positive change following Sim Update number 8, and that is the work that has been done on live traffic. Here you can see a live traffic aircraft that has been spawned in at New York's JFK. Now initially you may have noticed the landing gear wasn't there, suddenly the landing gear now has appeared. We're just talking the front wheel of course, not the main body landing gear. As I'm watching, you can now also see the GPU is backing up to the aircraft. And I watched this just for a little while to see how well this is going to work. For those of you familiar with live traffic, you'll have known that Previously, live traffic used to arrive at airports, but it never departed. They used to spawn in at the gate, and that's as far as they got. It now seems that Azobo have redone this, and it is actually all working really nicely, including not just aircraft that will depart after spawning in, but the ground crews and jetway all come and service the aircraft prior to its departure. This includes the loading of the luggage and also the catering vehicles. Once that's all done, the tug will move itself into position and push the aircraft back. Communicating with default air traffic control then, and the aircraft is safely on its way, also managing to bypass incoming aircraft at the same time. 
Being a complete commercial aviation geek then, I spent a lot of time just watching aircraft spawn in, get serviced, push back and depart, all while landing traffic worked just as it always had. So this is a great move forward for Microsoft Flight Simulator, so we have to congratulate Azobo on a job well done here, really nice to see. As updates go then, I think really time is going to tell whether or not this particular update was a success. We've already identified a couple of things here in this video, but really what I want to hear is from you guys, how you are doing following the update to Sim Update 8. Sim stability is meant to be a huge part of this update, and I guess we are only going to find out whether that has worked when we hear from people like you in the community that are using Microsoft Flight Simulator on a daily basis. So we want to hear about your crash to desktops or if you have had any since the update. Touch wood, I actually haven't, which is a bonus, but time will tell. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and of course if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye for now.